Good morning, good morning, Rabbi Welcome to Breakfast on the Class. Breakfast on the Class today uh, is dedicated in loving memory of Raquel's father, Ezra Abed, Alava Shalom, Lilu Nishmat Ezra Ben Rachel, sponsored by Raquel and Jacob Aini. Hazaku Baruch. Breakfast on the Class is dedicated uh, for the Refuah of Isaac Shalom, Yishak Hayim Ben Altun, Altun Ora, sponsored by his family. The whole community, of course, is praying uh, for his recovery. Breakfast on the Class is well dedicated in loving memory of Zach, of uh, Jack Zaki Fadlon, Alava Shalom Lilun Ishmat Yitzhak Ben Lisa, sponsored by Ma, uh, Michael Dweck, sponsored as well by Ben Navi, dedicated loving memory of his grandfather Lilun Ishmat Moshe Haim Ben Goli and Rahamim Akohen Alava Shalom, and in loving memory Lilun Ishmat Simcha Bat Rachel, sponsored by Rav Avi Dan um, uh, as well. Um, lastly, before we have our, our, our final happy one, uh, happy dedication, we also would like to dedicate on behalf of the Edmund J. Safra Synagogue uh, today's breakfast class uh, in memory of uh, Estelle Hadea Alava Shalom, who after such a long time, uh, they finally were able to uh, identify her remains from the building in Surfside yesterday, and she will be, uh, she'll be brought to whatever kivura is possible, and as well, that the family could begin the process of nechama, of healing. Uh, we wish them, everyone in the community has been praying for this closure for the family, and Be'ezat Hashem, it should herald a time of healing and of comfort uh, for them and for all the people um, who are, uh, who are uh, either dedicating as Le'ilu Nishmat or sitting through that process. And on a happier note, uh, the, the breakfast and class today is dedicated as well in celebration of the wedding of Michelle Basali to Ezra Moseri by Andy Basali, Mabruk and Mazal Tov. It is my wish that their simcha should spill over its boundaries and borders into the homes of everyone else that is here um, with us studying both present and virtually. My friends, the Pasuk says, when the Jewish people arrived to Eretz Israel, it tells us about how when they took over these new houses and new places they were going to move into, the new villages and towns they were going to settle in, that they should ensure that that which was there before them, the Abu Dazara, the inappropriate things, that those things should be kind of eradicated gotten rid of. The statues, the idols, the Avodah Zarah that was left there should be destroyed, burned in the fire. Even if they're made of gold and silver, don't think to yourself, wow, you know what? I'm not going to bow down to this beautiful statue of Atlas holding up the world, right? I'm just going to have it in my backyard. What am I going to call it? Art. I'll call it art, right? It's Avodah Zarah. Even if you're not bowing down to it, Avodah Zarah, you can't have it. You're not allowed to have that thing. So therefore, you burn it. Why? Maybe you brought it in for the right reasons, but you wound up, unfortunately, losing out because it was in your house. Because this is an abomination of Hashem, your God. And here's the pasuk I want to focus on. Do not bring an abomination into your home. And you will become banned. You will become harem haram. Kamo, just like it. Shaketz to shakesenu. Rather, you need to make it into something which disgusts you. Ta'ev to ta'avenu, which should be something which is an abomination to you. Ki who because it has been banned. It has been pushed away um, from what God wants. And I, I think this pasuk holds a tremendous lesson to all of us. Because the pasuk is telling us, Don't bring something disgusting into your home. You know why? Vehayita cherem kamohu. These two uh, ideas together teach us the most powerful lesson of all. My friends, you know, the mitzvah that we read about last week in the parasha was where the pasuk says, you know, you write these war- words, you know, and you place them on mezuzot betecha ubisharecha, on the doors of your home ubisharecha and in your gates. Most of us are familiar with the idea that the mezuzah protects us from robbers. It protects the house from flood, from fire. The idea is that the house should be protected by the mezuzah. But oftentimes what we're not realizing is that we, as Am Yisrael, we're all familiar with the idea if something goes wrong, check the mezuzah. After every six years, five, seven years, check the mezuzah, check the mezuzah, check the mezuzah. We're busy, Rabotai, all the time checking the mezuzah. But sometimes we need to think if the mezuzah has checked us. You walk through the front door of your home, what did you bring with you from outside into the house? 
Every single person here, if you walked in the mud, what would you do with your shoes when you get to the front door? Even if you're not one of those houses that you take the shoes off, if you walk through the mud, what do you do when you get into your house? You take your shoes off. You know why? Because you don't want to track mud all over your house. My friends, when we are out and about in the streets of this world, there are ideas, there are things that we are picking up, we become contaminated. And we walk with those ideas into the house. My friends, the very last place of purity in this world is the Jewish home. Our values, our dreams, and our goals for ourselves, our wives, our husbands, our children, our grandchildren, they live in the four walls of your home. Now, Under Armour used to make a t-shirt. You know what it said on the t-shirt? It said, protect this house. Now, it's talking about, you know, the basketball court. It's talking about the soccer pitch. But my friends, that is the most appropriate message for the Jewish home. Protect this house. Now, it's important to understand because the Pasuk is telling you something unequivocal. If you bring Toeva to your house, you know what's going to happen? You will become Cherem. You will become yourself banned. You will become yourself an abomination. You will become yourself disgusting. If you do not ensure that your house does not have within it the disgusting things from outside. Now there's only one thing to recognize here, and that is that if it's in your house, you are becoming it. I want you to imagine a guy sees black mold growing on the wall. Someone comes over, they're like, are you Majnun, that mold? Anyone who knows real estate will tell you. You buy a house with black mold in it. The mold is, black mold is fatal. It will kill you. Imagine telling a guy, you have a mold problem. The guy says, well, are you gonna lick it? No. Are you gonna eat it? No. Don't go up to the wall and sniff it in, you'll be fine. That's not how it works. If it's inside the house, it infects everything. My friends, says the Pasuk, the world is full of many different ideas. The only way to keep it out of you is to keep it out of your house. So my friends, what are you letting in your house? And here's where the Pasuk tells you the second bit of wisdom. If you just take a laissez-faire approach, if, you know, yeah, love, I love everybody, love and be loved, accept and be accepted, tolerate everything. If you're that person, make no mistake, the walls of your house are porous. Everything that's on the street is coming in your house. Every idea of the street is coming in your house. What the world thinks your children should be like is coming in your house. The way the world teaches people about a work ethic, about honesty, about marriage, about what the appropriate things to do, to think, to wear, to be, all of that that exists outside, it's coming home like the English kept singing until it didn't. It's coming home. The only way is shaketz to shaketzenu, to make absolutely crystal clear to your children what you think is inappropriate, what you think is wrong. My friends, and this has never been more true than our time. You know why? Because a lot of very nice ideas, if you actually break them down into a granular level, you'll realize that those ideas are destroying the fabric of society. But they present as very nice ideas. Says the Torah, Lo tachmod kesef v'zahav alehim. If it is something which is inappropriate, don't love the gold and silver that's on it. Don't think to yourself, oh, you know what? But at its core, it's a nice idea. Do you know what? Again, let me, I just, I cannot, I cannot make myself more clear uh, than I am. So I'm going to just spell it out. It is a wonderful thing to take care of people that are underprivileged. Wonderful. But when you keep writing checks to people who are staying home from work, you are subsidizing, you are creating a world where people don't work. A beautiful idea, which actually is, the, is an abomination. Because people who don't work, what happens? They become people who expect everything for free. 
Is this clear? What are you pushing out of your home? What are you welcoming into your home? These ideas, if you think your kids are going to pick them up by osmosis, think again. Find the time to talk about it, whether it's at the Shabbat table. What do you want from them? What do you hope for them? What do you think about the world? Now, a lot of people think, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to get into politics. This is not politics. Your, your view of the way the world should look, the way the world should be, it's guided by your Torah upbringing, by everything you learned in the community. It is very important that you hand that down to your kids. Do you know why? Because if you're not pushing things out of your house, they're coming in whether you like it or not. And if they're in your home, they're in your head. You know why? It doesn't say maybe you will become. It says vehayita. My friends, there's an amazing story. One of my favorite stories in the world. Baruch Atah, With Rav Chaim. Rav Chaim Salavechik. He was given a job in a certain town. He moved into the town, and after a short while, his wife sees him installing five, six locks on the door. And every night, he's locking one. Locking all the light locks on the door. His wife comes to him. She says, Honey, I don't know, she probably didn't call him honey. She probably called him Moreno Verabenu honey. I don't know what she called him, okay? But she, Rabbi, Baali, I don't know what she said. You know what she said? Why do we move the family here if it's so dangerous that you have to put six locks on the door? If there's so many thieves in this city, we shouldn't live here. Rav Chaim turns to his wife and says, I'm not worried about thieves, I'm not worried about robbers. I'm not worried about uh, militants. I'm not worried about looters. I noticed that in this city, people are not sensitive, they're not kind, they don't do acts of chesed. And I knew that that was going to become part of our house. It was going to affect our children, the way our children were taught to see the world. So I put on our door a whole bunch of locks so every night before I go to bed, I remember what am I locking out of my house. Now, in the negative, from the negative, you also see the positive. You see, because my follow-up question on that story was, if his wife said we shouldn't live here because there are thieves outside, why didn't she feel we shouldn't live here because there are people outside who are insensitive, who are careless individuals? And the answer is, because you can protect your house. And your house, if you put in the effort, is strong enough to be able to teach your kids and the future of your family what to think, what to be, even when outside there is a tempest brewing. You see that from the story too. But at the same time, my friends, that only happens with a conscious effort of shaketz to shaketzenu. In today's day and age, it becomes very, very difficult. If you brought a TV in your house, or you brought a, a laptop in your house, or you brought a phone in your house, make no mistake, everything's in your house. Once upon a time, if your kid would walk in with a dirty magazine into your house, you could throw it in the garbage, you could tell them off. But everything is accessible today. Everything is accessible on the phone. Everything is accessible on the, on, the, uh, on the laptop. Now, every person listening to this recording will have a different opinion of what that means and what they should allow and what they shouldn't allow. But I think everyone has certain red lines. Right? Imagine you saw your kid come home with a video, and on the video he had a live video of someone shooting someone else. You might feel, that's a terrible thing. My kid's going to learn violence. Who's putting this stuff up? Why, is this, why does my kid have to see that? If it's maybe of an inappropriate nature uh, in terms of uh, uh, intimacy, right? You might get upset. Recognize that unless you're pushing something out, it's coming in whether you like it or not. Make the appropriate adjustments. At the door of our home, we have the words, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. 
please Hashem, you know, listen, O Israel, Hashem Elokein Hashem. God decides what's right. There isn't another value system other than Him. And if that's the case, my friends, then when I walk through the front door of my house, what mud am I bringing in? What do I want outside? If you didn't push it away, it's coming in. There are organizations like TAG that will filter a person's phone. Now, you might choose to use something like that to be able to ensure that at least your vulnerable children won't get something that they, or have access to something that they should not have, whatever religious level you're on, okay? The stories that I know from working with young people are hair-raising. I cannot even tell them because they're, they're just not appropriate to share. But things that happen to children, children whose parents had no idea what was going on, kids in their room, on their phone, they have no idea, their poor innocent kid, God forbid, terrible instances of grooming, all sorts of things that are out there. No, if you're not pushing stuff out, it's pushing itself in. But it's not just the filter. One of my friends said something unbelievable. He said about himself. He says, some people, they use a filter on their phone. He says, my filter is between my ears. I use my brain to decide what I want and what I don't want. And I said to him, you know, that's true for you. For you. But is it true for your kids? Rabotai, there's nothing more valuable than our children. And what if we get to a point where we think to ourselves, oh my gosh, I could have protected my kids better. And now look at what I'm left with dealing with. This is what the Pasuk is communicating to us. But my friends, the opposite in the positive is also true. If you're talking all the time in your house about chesed and kindness, if you're talking all the time in your house about what a real marriage looks like, what, what, a, child, what a child should grow up to be, what a wife is, what a husband is, when people understand that from you, kids understand that, then the marriage that they have is modeled on yours. I still remember once, and I'll end with this, I remember once being in B'nai Brak at someone's Shabbat table happens to be. It was, in, it was outside of B'nai Brak in Ramat Gan. And it was a little kid who walks in, a little boy of five years old. And he walked in with another little girl of five years old. They were playing together. And the parent turned to the kid, looked at this girl who was a little overweight, maybe a little chubby, and said to her five-year-old boy, come on, honey, you could do better than that. Do you know what it means to destroy your children with your own hands, to destroy your kids, their value system. But if that's what the world is saying, that if you're not super skinny, you don't have value. If you're not rich or popular, then you're not important. Recognize, this is what your kids think. Unless you're fighting that with everything that you've got. Unless you're putting on a pedestal someone who isn't rich, who isn't important in the eyes of the world, who isn't popular, you're saying to them, this is someone that I respect, then your kids did not learn to push out what's making its way in your home. Shaketz teshakesenu. My friends, shaketz teshakesenu. Who are their role models? Who do they love listening to? Whose music are they following? Which shows are they watching? Recognize that these are their heroes. Unless you fight back and replace them with other heroes, that's what your house taught them. May God bless us to have our homes be a place which is nurturing uh, mitzvot, positivity, growth. And then our kids will learn that. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve